Okay, we're going to talk about myotomes and answer the what questions. What are myotomes and why are they important? And what primary actions test each myotome? And what is the deal with their variation? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So this term myotome means the following. Myo in Greek is muscle, or more specifically, means mouse. Because when you look at muscle under the skin, early anatomists said, hey, that kind of looks like a mouse moving. Then tomes is Greek for a section or volume of. So myotome literally in Greek means a volume of muscle or a section of muscle. Now clinically, we add a little bit more and we say a myotome is a group of muscles innervated by a single spinal cord or spinal nerve level. So why do we care about this? Well, to answer this question, let's take a look at a lateral view, a lateral view of a developing embryo. And then we have these somites, these segmental condensations of periaxial mesoderm. And each one of them, there's one somite, does the following. Here's a cross section and there's the somites in yellow. Each somite consists of dermatomes, myotomes, and sclerotomes. And the myotomes are what give rise to the skeletal muscle that migrates out to the body at every segmental level. So myotomes are a group of muscles innervated by a single spinal cord level, but also myotomes are part of a somite that forms the skeletal muscles. And so let's watch as that skeletal muscle migrates out and at every level, there is an associated spinal cord level that has a motor neuron that sends its axon out to innervate those group, that group of muscles associated with that segmental level. And so if we then see, if you test a specific movement, you can test a specific spinal cord and spinal nerve level. So there is one somite. At that level, it gives rise to a somite. It gives rise to dermatomes, myotomes, and sclerotome. And that myotome, though, has a group of muscles that provides an action. And that action is associated with the specific spinal cord level. At that level, and 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 that level. So what we see is if you test a specific movement, you test a specific spinal cord and spinal nerve level. That's why it's cool, cool. That sounded like a club in high school. That's why it's important to know your myotomes. So, in addition to a myotome being a group of muscles innervated by a single spinal cord level, therefore testing a movement enables you to see if the associated spinal cord level is intact. Let's see that in a little bit more detail. There is a list of specific clinically relevant myotome levels. In the upper limb, for those five myotomes, each of those have a specific associated movement, and each of those movements is as associated spinal cord level. And if we take a look at the... Um, intercostal and abdominal wall muscles, each of those myotomes has an associated movement which has an associated spinal cord level. Now, a little note is that T2 to L1 myotomes are more difficult to assess because their associated movements, think intercostal muscle movements, are harder to test compared to like bending the elbow or moving your fingers. Very easy to test movement and strength and harder on the intercostals. All right, now let's take a look at the lower limb. And each of these five lower limb segments have five lower limb myotomes, five mo associated movements, and five spinal cord levels associated with them. Okay, so let's now go through each one of these upper limb myotomes and start with C5 myotome, which is shoulder abduction, and abduction is Latin to take away. So there's our C5 spinal cord level, C5 vertebra, and we have a motor neuron that goes out, and we get ching, that movement from here to here, that is abduction of the glenohumeral joint or shoulder abduction. Now next is elbow flexion for the C6 myotome. That means bending the elbow. So when we look at the C6 spinal cord level and the C6 vertebra, watch the nerve course above the vertebra and going to muscles that will bend, bend the elbow or flexion. Elbow flexion, C6 myotome. Now the C7 myotome is elbow extension, which means to straighten the elbow. So there's the C7 spinal cord level and the C7 vertebra. And then the motor neuron goes out into primarily the triceps muscles. Shing! That movement of straightening the elbow where elbow extension is associated with the C7 myotome and spinal cord level. Now if C8 is finger flexion or bending of the fingers. And so there we have the C8 spinal cord level and the C7 vertebra. And this is that funky one where the C8 spinal nerve courses below the C7 vertebra. 
And then it goes to a group of muscles that shing are going to do that, are going to then cause flexion of the fingers. And then finally for the upper limb, the T1 myotome, which is finger abduction or spreading the fingers apart. There's the T1 myotome, there's the T1 vertebra, and underneath it, the nerve courses, and then goes to muscles of the intrinsic muscles of the hand that do that movement. Okay, they're going to spread the fingers apart or abduct the fingers. All right, so now let's go to the lower limb myotomes, and we're going to first focus on L2. The L2 myotome, which is hip flexion, which is lifting the knee off the ground. There's our L2 spinal cord level, and look down below is the L2 vertebra. The nerve courses down and then goes out to the hip flexors and causes that movement, okay? That one, lifting the knee off the ground or flexion of the hip joint. Next is hip adduction or squeezing your thighs together. Think riding a horse. There's the L3 spinal cord level and there's the L3 vertebra. And notice that the descending nerve roots come down and they're going to go to this group of adductor muscles, the medial compartment of the thigh that does that movement. Bingo, which is hip adduction, adding to the midline. Now, L4 is knee extension, which is straightening the knee. So there's our L4 spinal cord level and L4 vertebra. And look at those descending axons becoming that caudae equina and going out to your quads that cause that movement, the knee extension or straightening of the knee. And then there's dorsiflexion for L5, which is lifting the foot off the ground. So there's the L5 spinal cord level and the L5 vertebra and the descending motor neuron goes out to your anterior crest muscles of your leg. And they're going to cause that movement, dorsiflexion, which is lifting the foot off the ground, dorsiflexion. And then finally, S1 plantar flexion, which is st standing on your tippy toes or pointing your toes. So there's the S1 uh, spinal cord level and the S1 vertebral segment. And the motor neuron comes down and goes to the posterior calf muscles. And shing, that movement right there, standing on your tippy toes, that is called plantar flexion. And that movement's associated with the S1 myotome. Now, what about these myotome level discrepancies? Well, depending on where you look, you will find discrepancies between myotome levels. So here are these segmental myotome levels we talked about, and these are the actions that I just talked about associated with each of those actions. But now let's compare it to the Gray's Anatomy for Students textbook. Now, notice that there between the L3, L4, and L5 myotome levels, our two references vary in what actions we have the the, the patient do. Now let's take a look at the Asia, the Association of Spinal Injuries of America. We'll take a look at, we have discrepancies in the C5 and C6, as well as the L3 to L5 segmental levels of the actions associated with those myotome levels. And what about in Wikipedia by just looking at myotome, C7 discrepancies and L3 to L5 discrepancies. And what about one of my uh, a neuro textbook I really like by Nolte called The Human Brain? We have the C7 to T1 discrepancies and L3 to L5 discrepancies. So when we look at all these together, depending on which reference you look to, you're going to find discrepancies between myotomal levels. What is the deal? Well, this graphic shows the following. You can see segmental levels in the cervical myotome, C5 to T1, and a muscle group, in this case, shoulder girdle group. And then down below, we see uh, dark dashed is major contributions, light dash is minor, and then equivocal, like very little contribution towards it. So let's give you some examples. So there's our supraspinatus muscle. Big contribution from C5 and a little bit from C6. Now let's take a look at the deltoid, both big on C5 and C6, and both of those muscles are the primary abductors of the glenohumeral joint. But then we look at the biceps, and it also has big contributions from C5 and C6. So technically, to test the C5 and C6 myotomes, it's actually a combination of abduction of the shoulder and flexion of the elbow, which is what the biceps does. And then when you take a look at all those muscles, they're both, you know, you got these combination of C5 and C6. Now look at down here, forearm muscles, like right there. If we look at forearm flexors, like our, our flexor digitorum longus and uh, flexor carpal narus and flexor digitorum profundus, it's showing both C8 and T1, where I just talked about it being C8. And then we take a look at over here with the lower limb. We start up at L2, 
with the iliacus, which is the hip, and then watch as we descend down to the intrinsic foot muscles. The farther we go distally in the limb, the more lower we get down in our L2 to S2 segments. So what's the deal? This is what happens when you've got migrating myotomes. We've got overlapping where some, each individual muscle often has in the upper and the lower limbs more than one level contributing, more than one uh, spinal cord level and nerve level contributing to its innervation. So what I just wanted to mention is in the noted anatomist in this myotome levels, I teach to memory, not 100% accuracy. And reason why is, take a look at these four references and then mine included. There's variation between them. And so what I found is when I tried to teach all of them, my students would leave not understanding any of it. But if they can simplify it so then they memorize one action for each level and the concept they get, when they go off to become a PMNR doc or orthopedic doc or internal medicine, neurology, um, family medicine, wherever they go off to, go, uh, to do practice medicine, the concept is there. And then however they focus that, uh, for the levels, they'll understand it. So that, my friends, is showing the myotomes in a nutshell. Mm -hmm.